So the first thing is welcome. Okay. The running order for tonight, uh, I'm going to do, do some introductions. Um, we've got Michael Bennett, who is building passive houses, uh, and he's going to talk about his experience. Uh, we've got Paul Dorn, who has built a passive house and has really looked at the issue from the cost perspective. He's going to talk about it. Uh, we've got Philip Lee, who's a solicitor specialising in energy and environmental issues uh, for the purposes of ourselves. That's, that's why he's here. And then we're going to have a Q&A at the end. Okay. Uh, presentations won't be onerous, they won't be uh, uh, except, exceptionally long. Uh, and in fact, I was even debating whether I was, I was going to give a presentation. Let me explain first what the Passive House Association of Ireland does. It's purely a voluntary organisation. Uh, it's comprised of eight directors, none of which get a, a red cent out of it, where people essentially understand what Passive House is, uh, coming at it from the perspective of engineering, uh, um, academic, um, uh, architecture, uh, media, uh, and essentially, we spend our days, you know, figuring out how to promote Passive House because we believe and we think it's the right thing to do. It's a voluntary organisation. The only reason we're here is because we think it's the right thing to do. It was formed in 2010. We have a number of industry uh, members. Uh, we also have a number of individual members. We've got local chapters in Cork, uh, Waterford, and we also established them now in, um, in Northern Ireland. Uh, we do Passive House briefings, so this will be considered a Passive House briefing or a special event. Uh, but we also have see the light conferences. We had our very first conference in Northern Ireland and Anskillen there on the 24th of September. Uh, and we've had a number of conferences in Ireland, and the next one's coming up on, on the 13th of November in Cork. We also do a design charrette, and it's going to be a design charrette for third level students in Waterford Institute of Technology on, on Friday week. Uh, and we do Passive House open days. And if anybody wants to know what a Passive House is, um, well, then just go along to the Passive House, keep a, a look on our website. A Passive House is something that's very simple in, its, in, its, uh, in truth. Um, there's very elegant building physics behind it. It was a concept that was founded by Professor Wolfgang Feist. He got his PhD uh, when he found that if you can get the energy demand down to 10 watts per meter squared, you can use air as the heat transport mechanism. And what that means is 10 watts multiplied by 100 square meters means that for a standard two-bed house, you're talking about a heating system the size of a toaster. Okay? He used existing components put this thing together, uh, he used triple glazed windows, excellent ins insulation, made the building draft proof and then put the, um, exchanged the air, made sure there was fresh air um, using a heat recovery and ventilation system. The concept behind it is if it's 20 degrees in the house, zero degrees outside, these things are 80%, 90% efficient. Uh, if it's 90% efficient, the outgoing air going out at 20 degrees heats the incoming air up to 18 degrees for the price of running a very low cost fan. And what that means is you need to put in very little energy. Now, this was developed 25 years ago. This is not rocket science. And in fact, next year they're celebrating their 25th um, anniversary and they're coming up with you know, the very first house in Darmstadt that was built. And they're taking it apart and they're going after it. So they say, you know, does it have interstitial condensation issues? Does it have any mold? Does it have a. And from what we've seen so far, it doesn't. It's a concept that's been proven 25 years ago works and still continues to work today. So from that point of view, if you're looking to put in a low risk method of achieving the energy performance of buildings directors, and we all have to achieve this by, by 2020 throughout the EU, this is probably the lowest risk way you can get at doing it. It's proven, it's been around, and we'd say it just is the, is the easiest way of doing it. Um, the Passive House Standard is a leading low energy building standard in the world, and because of that it has the potential really, to eliminate fuel poverty. I was speaking at a a conference, the Irish Council for Social Housing, three weeks ago. And uh, I was asked to speak at just about passive houses in the innovation section. Um, but you know, there were a number of different players there. And what was really good from my point of view was there was a lady there, she's the chairwoman of the Inish Free Housing Association, which is the largest housing association in London. And it's looking after essentially Irish expats over in London. Uh, and she said they had a bit of a history of this thing. They had the history, the soft worked, and now they're just building passive houses. That's what they do. Uh, and they just got the concept, looked at it, said it works. Jeff Colley has the Passive House Plus magazine, and he has a number here as well. Um, really worthwhile reading a, a, an excellent article on the Norfolk uh, social housing development there. And they had, as far as I remember, there were 18 houses in the development, and nine of them, they monitored uh, ex extensively, and nine of them never used the heating in the year. So they over, didn't over the pay. first four years of the occupied, no heating use at all, neither elderly people. You know, so they essentially decided, or not, that they weren't going to spend any money on, on housing. But the point is they didn't need to. 
And you know, that's, 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 that's a real life case study. So, you know, when it comes to building these things, Paul is going to be talking about his experience in terms of building uh, and how much it cost, and he's got a very good story to tell around that. The other thing is in terms of the speed of build, it need take no longer. You know, if you do prefabricated buildings, um, if you just start with the end in mind, this thing isn't going to, you know, there's no housing shortage because the housing standard is passive house or is uh, too demanding. You know, it simply isn't an issue um, from the point of view of, of um, the speed of build. If you plan it, you can do it. Um, but what we say is the quality is second to none. And the other thing that really irks me is that Ireland has a long history of this thing. The very first passive house in the English-speaking world was built here. It was built in Ireland, down in, in, out of the blue in, in, um, in Wicklow. And that was 10 years ago. And we have more skilled professionals in Ireland um, in passive house design than anywhere else in the world, bar Germany. And we have more English-speaking passive house designers in the world, bar none, here in Ireland. We're exporting, um, you know, Munster Join is an export example, where they're doing passive house, and because it's an international standard, they're exporting. But of course, the vast majority of their uh, business is now exporting this technology over our heads out to other countries. Signum, exactly the same. They're building passive house systems for constructing passive houses in Cork, and they're exporting because there isn't a market here in Ireland for it. We're exporting our expertise. Thomas O'Leary um, is the Passive House um, Academy, and I mean, he's gone off, he's, he's training, at the moment he's in Vancouver, he's training in New York City, he's training in, in Australia, he's, he's training in, in, in China. So we're really ahead of the game in this technology, which, you know, is a fantastic place to be, but it's a really disappointing thing when you sort of look and say, well, why are we actually building more here? Why isn't it the standard here? And the point is, lots of other areas have decided to implement the Passive House Standard. I mean, Brussels has decided to do it. Frankfurt, New York City, coming from, a, a, from way behind us, are now implementing the Passive House Standard uh, as a way of achieving their, their energy targets. Uh, Vancouver have incentives in order to encourage people to build the Passive House Standard. So it's really with that in mind that we thought the opportunity was really here in Dunleary, right down, right now, sort of um, they always um, uh, were innovative in terms of these things. Here's a specific example now where a decision to be made next week and we thought it would be really useful to have a session here and to have an open session uh, in order to, to, to help the councillors in that respect. Isn't it great what you can do without a PowerPoint? 